the rugged coastline of the Florio Peninsula in South Australia, an unforgiving place where only the toughest of plants survive. But even in this hot, harsh environment, one very clever lady has created one unique dry garden by working with nature, not against it. High on the slopes overlooking the mighty Murray's final journey to the sea, you'll find Boat's End. A world-class garden created by Sarah Butterick over 10 years from the ground up. So what was it like when you first arrived here? It was a, an empty paddock. Had it had sheep on it? Or? It had cattle on it. Oh, really? Well, both, actually. Yeah. The wind was incredible. Things would get literally blown out of the ground. Goodness. Soil was terrible. Interesting, because most of us are flat out with compost and manure and soil improvement, but you decided not to go that way. No, no. It was too hard. And I just thought if you selected the right plants, that would work. Really think it is rolling with the punches. Don't fight nature. It's just beautiful. What about water? How, how do you go for water here? Well, we're on rainwater. It rains in the winter and recharges the soil, and hopefully that's enough to see it through summer. Now, summers are brutal. We get heat waves of sort of 36 to 40 degrees. This all desiccates, basically. First rain in autumn, it comes to life again, until spring when, you know, it all starts to flower and happen, and it's fantastic. <laughs> Where did the name Boat's End come from? Because it's, you know, I can see the sea and the and the lake and the river down there. Was there a high tide or...? Well, no. <laughs> no, we had this uh, old... I think it was a pram dinghy. It's actually... The last little bit of it is up by the, the boat shed up there. It was the end of the boat. Right. And when we were thinking of names for the garden, we came up with this idea of calling, you know, Boat's End. It's so different because you've gone the direction you've gone and work with nature. Mm. And that's clever. And I don't know why more people don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. The bold and architectural structures in the garden are provided by these amazing agave Americanas, the blue one and also the variegated form. But right down at ground level, she still kept with the grey and used the succulent cotyledon in amongst the mounds of beautiful, soft grey pig face, not in flower yet. Colour really is the unifying factor right throughout this whole garden. This is the mesimbrianthemum, the ice flowers. There's also the South African daisy, the Arctotus. Look at this apricot mass. It goes on for miles in front of the house. How about the amazing lime green of the euphorbia? And then there's a little bit of a contrast. This is the rich cobalt blue of the Dutch iris, the red flowers of the melianthus. Who says you can't have colour in a garden like this? You know, they've cleverly blurred the boundaries to the garden so that it blends into the natural landscape. It really is breathtaking. But maybe what's more important, if you're gardening in these similar harsh conditions, listen to the land, work with the soil, and success will be yours just like it is here.